Hey again, it's Eugene Eric Kim of Faster Than 20 here to do another staying strategic workout. So I feel like I'm about halfway through uh, a set, uh, a complete set of workouts. If you remember from the last time, it had been about 10 days between workouts. And um, this time around, it's only been one day. So yesterday I did the question dumping and sense making. And today I'm just gonna do a sense making workout. The nice thing about today's workout is that up until now, I haven't had really a chance to just live in a more or less uh, completed sense-making document that's already organized and that already has a set of questions. Before, I spent a lot of time just integrating questions, scoring, doing all that other stuff. Today, I'm going to do a little bit of updating, but I'm also hopefully going to just get a lot of time to answer things and see where I land. So let's see how it goes. This is gonna be the first workout where I start with a sense-making document that's already pretty well fleshed out. And I'm just gonna spend time going through it. I'm gonna update the questions, the question scores, that kind of stuff. But I'm really gonna focus on, on answering and exploring. And you'll remember from the last workout, I created a buckets document. So I'll probably be pulling stuff out of the buckets document as well. So here we go. Update the last updated date. Always important to keep your document clean and updated. I did a little quick review of the buckets document and you can see I wanna actually start there. One of my early questions here are around success. And so the natural thing to do is to start taking the relevant data and moving it into a success spectrum. And so I've, I've made a note to do that and I created a link to the success spectrum, which is in the buckets document. And I'm just staying on this page and adding some more stuff to questions, updating the scores. I've had a day to think about things. So some of the scores might be different. I might be feeling differently about certainty and uncertainty. You can see I have an action item that came up, so I'm going to go ahead and capture that in my buckets under action plan. There's really three things that you're doing in this, this staying strategic program. First, you're just dumping whatever's in your head. Second, you're trying to make sense of things. And then third, you're basically taking any insights that you gather and you're moving them into a format that is going to be helpful and actionable for you. And so that's what I'm doing here. There's, I'm finding, okay, answering the question around success is really important, not surprising. And I've done enough thinking here that I feel ready to start filling some stuff in. You can see I've actually decided to create two success spectrums. One is for basically fall of this year, 2020. So three months of getting to do my soft launch and learning from that process. But then I've done a success spectrum for all of 2021. And that's really a place where I can articulate what my larger goals are for this program. It might look very different come January 2021 based on what I learn over the next three months or four months. So I'm, I'm giving myself two different spectrums so that I can play with that a little bit. So I have this section here called compass. I often encourage people to think about a compass, what would work as a compass for them when they're thinking about whatever their project is. When we create strategy documents, there's a, a tendency to do things like vision, mission, strategies, metrics, roadmap, whatever. All those things are useful. And, you know, for the most part, we, we need some of that stuff in, in our documents. But really, the reason why I think so often this stuff gets left on a bookshelf is either they're poorly crafted or they're just in a format where it's not helpful to us. What I like about the idea of a compass metaphor is that it's something 
that you look at to help guide you, to help you find your way. And so when you do a question dumping, you see what's going to be in your head already most of the time. And you don't need to necessarily put those things in the compass because those are the things that are always in your head. So figuring out like the important things that you need to be thinking about, but you forget to think about and putting those on a compass is really important. So now I'm, um, so I, I had that compass document, didn't really put much in there. I've been going back and forth from sense making into my buckets and um, really pulling out sort of really focusing on action plan stuff. There's, there's a bunch of stuff that I clearly just need to do. And so it's helpful to pull that out and give me the opportunity to just do those things. And this is great because I'm finally starting to answer a question in the getting the word out section, which is about marketing. You can see that I had left that section entirely blank over the course of three, three-ish. Yeah, I guess it's the third sense making workout and two question dumpings, really three question dumpings. So obviously figuring out marketing is important and obviously it was not top of mind for me. Maybe it was, maybe the questions were top of mind, but the answers weren't. So the discipline of saying, okay, I've clearly kept this section blank. Now it's time for me to start answering questions is really helpful. And you can see by the speed at which I'm, I'm exploring these questions, I, I have some idea of what the answers are. The, the questions are highlighted yellow and green, meaning I have some ideas or a lot of ideas. And so it's just a matter again of getting them out of my head and seeing what happens. You can see I'm also adding a little short form questions here. I'm just bolding them to make sure I answer them. It's not worth it for me to go through all the scoring or that sort of thing because they're just kind of like smaller questions, but I did want to bold them to make them show through. Prioritizing the question about testing and this question about packaging, why I'm even thinking about combining a, a gym and a community offering as opposed to having two separate offerings. more notes in my bucket. So there's some data collection that I have to do before I can answer some of these questions, which is why I noted that in my bucket. And just, just taking some time to answer some more questions. just about 30 minutes into my workout and already it's been super productive. Not only have I started formulating both a success spectrum, but also an action plan. But for the first time, I'm, I'm really getting a chance to delve into sections of my sense making document that I just have essentially ignored, probably because they're hard or they're just not top of mind. And that's where the iteration is so important. It's like work on the stuff that's already top of mind, get it out of your head and organize it so you don't have to think about it again. And that basically creates space for you to work on the stuff that you need to be thinking about, but you haven't been thinking about. So I've moved on to the next section, just answering more blank questions. For the most part, I've been tackling yellow questions is okay. Most of the document is, is yellow or green anyway. Again, this is clearly a question where I had lots of ideas in my head and I just need to get them out.
So answering that question led to another question. So I added that question and I scored it and put in some notes. Now I'm identifying things in one of my greens that is like, yes, okay, I'm, that's pretty much a decision. So I'm gonna make the font bigger. And I'm gonna adjust some of the other answer to account for this new decision that I've made. Decide to do a little organization here. Felt like that question was repeated, so I got to consolidate and I felt like I had certainty, so I changed the score. And I'm going back to just answering blank questions. It can feel so luxurious to have gone through a lot of work and to have cleared a bunch of things out of your head and then to finally sit down and to make time to just get to questions you know you have to answer. That's where the iterations are so important. It can't just be a, a one-time deal. It, it takes several passes to figure all this stuff out because it's complicated. If it wasn't complicated and if it wasn't hard, then you wouldn't have to go through all this stuff. But it's so important to do it. I think so often when people do strategy, they hire a consultant to help them avoid the struggle. When in fact, the role of a good consultant in that case is to support you in struggling. Just like a good fitness trainer. You're not replacing the struggle. You're helping people through the struggle. And that's what 80% of this program is. It's, it's giving you space and maybe a little bit of guidance so that you can make time to struggle and to work through it. And at least do it in a form where if you don't know what your answers are and if you can't make decisions, then you can actually show it to people and talk to them and, and get help. And you're not starting from scratch. All this stuff is already articulated. Really, really showing the importance of moving back and forth between the sense making document and the buckets document. When it's clear something is ready to be bucketed, put it in the bucket. So here I'm, I'm adding something in my success spectrum. And when I put it in parentheses, that just means I don't have a quantification, quantified metric that I want to put in there yet but I do want to have one. So I put in parentheses to remind myself to go back and figure out what the numbers might be. Again, identifying things that are basically decisions at this point and marking them as such by increasing the font size. And back to answering blank questions. Really spent a lot of great time in this workout answering blank questions, which I'm super happy about. Most of them are yellow questions. So again, haven't gotten a lot of time to spend on, on red questions, but that's okay. Identified this question as being higher priority. And so I um, made the font size bigger and you saw I, I stared at it for a while, just pondered it. What's hopefully come through in watching all of these workouts is just how nonlinear this process is. It's very rarely the way people want it to be, which is, okay, you sit down, you do your analysis, your assessment, then you lay out your goals, and then you lay out your strategy, and then you're done. It's In reality, it's going to be a lot of jumping back and forth between, okay, I'm in the weeds already. I'm thinking about how to do it, but I really haven't articulated my goals. So I'm going to step back and articulate my goals. And that's going to lead to questions around data. So I'm going to go and find the data, 
which is going to help me with the goals, which is going to help me with the strategy. It's that iterative, nonlinear process of going back and forth. And these workouts give you a frame in which to do that, in which to stay organized. I'm just doing this individually right now, but you can imagine how powerful this is when you do it organizationally or with your team or your group or whomever, because different people are going to think in different ways. They're going to naturally be drawn to different questions. And that's okay. People can go in the order that they are drawn to, but at some point you're going to put it all together and you're going to get a, a really crystal clear picture of where you are as a group. And that's going to give you the opportunity to work through questions where there's either lack of alignment or questions that are not being addressed by anybody. And so this is very helpful just as an individual, but when you use it in a group context, it's so powerful. Okay, so I'm just about wrapped up. I'm flipping around. Ooh, community. I didn't answer any questions in community. So clearly I need to go back to that at some point. And I'm squeezing in an answer to the fear question. And that's the hour. So I'm done with this workout. It felt super productive. And I think I'm just about ready to start getting feedback from a colleague. So we'll save that for the next workout. It felt really good to have that opportunity to just sit down and just live in that document and to start filling in gaps. And you can see at the very end, um, I noticed that there was a pretty big gap. There were a whole set of questions around the, the community part that I just haven't even addressed at all. That doesn't mean I haven't thought about it, but obviously it's high time for me to actually sit down and just write some stuff down. So what I think I'm gonna do uh, for next time is another um, staying strategic sense-making workout, and we can see what happens from there. Looking forward, till then.